Hello everybody, hope uh, everything's all right out there and you're ready to learn and um, all I'm going to say is, uh, let's go. We're gonna have a look at human evolution. Now, human evolution is actually a very, very big subject or very big section of this paper. So if we have a look at it, I first wanna give you, let me just go to that page. I first wanna give you a little checklist. Now, this checklist is going to help you come right in this this whole paper. So if we have a look at it, you need to, let me just make sure I get some color here so we can get everything going. Make sure that you know your phylogenetic trees. Okay, now your phylogenetic trees is very important. They will always ask it, right? Well, that's how I always say it. They always ask it because it brings in humans into this, right? So they're gonna look at the phylogenetic tree, which I've just mentioned over here, right? They're gonna have a look at how it involves itself into the kingdom. Okay, so that's the first thing you must remember. Please write it down and make sure you understand it. Look at the next one. It is compare characteristics of humans and primates. Now, trust me when I say this to you. They love it, okay? Primates and humans are so closely related that they keep bringing something in there. And how humans changed through evolution and how primates changed through evolution and what is so similar about them. That is the main thing that we're actually going to focus on, right? So that is comparing the characteristics or the main parts of, this, of the primates and the humans, okay? Very important. Then you've got to do discuss the changes and structures. If I had just, I'm, I'm looking at the discuss the changes and the structures of the characteristics of human evolution. So how did humans get to where they were? Where did they start from? How did they develop? What made them change? Things like that. That is the main things that we're actually looking at, right? So make sure you know your human evolution quite well. And then of course, you need uh, fossil evidence. Now, Fossil evidence, the nice thing about fossil evidence is that you stay in this beautiful country. And this beautiful country has got everything that we need, right? Especially for humans. They say that evolution for humans started off in Africa, right? So just think how special you are. You should know this so well. Even though you have to study it, just think you are part of what's happened. Right, very important. <coughs> then it's discuss and the, the contribution of uh, African fossils, right? I've just mentioned Africa, the fossils that come from there, that's where this all started from. So don't worry about um, being, uh, how do I say this? Don't, don't worry ab about things that are gonna sound quite confusing. Just make sure that you know what the structures look like, make sure you can identify them, and make sure you can tell the difference. And there are three main ones, but we're gonna get to them later. Three main fossils that we always, or they always look at. Right, and remember this word over here, this big word here, discuss. Think about it carefully. They're gonna ask you to say the difference be uh, between them and, and all of that type of thing. It's all about like essay writing or big long questions. They're always gonna ask you that. So discuss is very, very, very important, right? And then consider the difference in alternative. Um, alternative is different, right? We're looking at evolution. We know of evolution from Darwin's side. Remember, you've got to have a look at from Erasmus' side. You've got to look at everything. You can't just go with one, okay? Even though they've thrown the one out, or they don't like that one, you still need to know it. Because if you don't know that, how can you believe that Darwin is right, right? So you need to know all these different parts. Very, very important. These checklists are normally always asked. Always asked. Now, if I have a look, if I have a look at this, most of the final exams normally have some of this in it, right? A lot of it, sometimes they don't, but most of the time they have it in. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off with different papers that I've got together, different questions from final papers and past papers and all of that, and we're gonna work through it and I'm gonna explain it why they asked it like that and what's the whole point or how to answer it. Right, so hopefully you've got pen and piece of paper down. I know I abbreviate, so make sure that you write down everything in full so that you've got it. Right, okay, let's start it off. Question one, okay, they want you to have a look at the diagram below. Even before you look, just read the question. If you have a look, look at the diagram below. It shows the phylogenetic um, phylo tree. 
I know these are big words, guys, but we'll get used to them. Even I make mistakes, we all get there, right? It just doesn't roll off the tongue. But your phylogenetic tree, right? They're gonna have a look at the DNA, similar, uh, the similarities between the DNA, okay? We're just highlighting all the big words here. And then the difference between the genomes, ooh, this pen's not writing today. The genomes, right? Can you remember what genomes are? Very important, remember, your genomes are your genes, what makes makes up, right? It's part of this paper normally, but this part of the paper always links to genetics. Remember, evolution is a change in genetics, so it's all there together, right? So if I just had a look at that, you've got your, um, your whole sequence, your DNA, you've got everything, okay? So now, let's have a look at these pictures. Well, this, this phylogenetic tree, right? Now, if you have a good, good look at it, you will notice that we've got a couple of things that are very important. Firstly, at the bottom of it, you will notice that there's millions of years ago, M-Y-A, very important, M-Y-A, okay? Millions of years ago. Then you will notice that they've come with different, there's the new world monkeys, the old world monkeys, okay? They've got all the different primates going up to us or the most complicated one, which of course is right at the top, humans. Okay, so now that you've seen that, have a look. There's something else that's very important, okay? Why do you think that they would go and put this main thing here, percentages? Look carefully. You get percent, your, your percentages. These percentages are very, very, very important, right? The main thing about it is if they've got percentages there, they're going to ask a question on it. They're always going to, right? So don't get fooled by it, okay? Look at these things very, very carefully. Let's have a look at the questions. Okay, from the diagram, determine, <coughs> sorry, determine, if you look at the determine, it means show, right? Determine how long ago chimpanzees, well, let's get this right, chimpanzees would split from humans, okay? Now, let's have a look at this phylogenetic tree. If you have a look, there's humans, okay? There are your chimpanzees as a group together, yes? You get your old chimpanzees, and then you get your smaller chimpanzees, right? So there's two types of chimpanzees. But have you noticed they come from the same line? There's, there's the line. That's the main line over there, okay? They're asking you how long ago did they split from the human, should I say, the human form, right? And if you have a look here, there's, there's the line, okay? So it's split at that specific point. If I really wanted to, I could draw a line. Um, hopefully you can see, draw a line all the way down. There it is, five. Okay, five. Now, please understand, this is working from zero or from day, this day now, where humans or, or homo sapiens have come from, all the way to when they weren't homo sapiens, right? Now, that is five. And if you look at it, it actually works in reverse. It actually works opposite to the way we read in South Africa. It goes from right to left. So it's getting bigger and bigger. So five. So all I have to do to answer that question it's very small, it's unbelievable, it's two marks, two marks for nothing. It is five, oh, not looking very good today. If I can just find the eraser, there it is. Okay, it's five, uh, there we go, five million years ago. Okay, five million years ago, you will get two marks. Plain, simple, no problems, right? That is just Nice and easy. Reading off a graph, you can do this. Don't stress, read your questions very carefully. We carry on. Which organism is the most closely, there we go, most closely related to humans? Now, if we go up, percentages. Can you remember those percentages I was telling you about? Have a look. You got a 13% over here. You got a 7.9, 5.7, 3.6, 1.6 and 1.4. Those are percentages actually telling you difference between them. So which is the lowest difference between them? Of course, the chimpanzees. Okay, so there's your answer for number two, right? There it is. It's your chimps. I'm going to put CH for chimps, right? Just your chimps. Your chimps are the closest related to us. And you've heard this all the time. They're always the closest. They always say, we come from the chimpanzees. It's not like that. We do not come from the chimpanzees, but we are the most closest related to them, or they the most closest related to us, should I say. Right, so 
So far, these questions, one word answers, there's for one mark, simple, easy, we can get it done. Right, now, here comes a big thing. It says, calculate. There it is, calculate. Do not think that you're in life science and you are not going to do any calculations. There will always be calculations, right? If you think about it, you're going to get your population dynamics and all of this, and you're going to work out all the different how to mark, recapture mark method. There's another sum. Don't forget your calculators. Very important. Make sure they're there, okay? You want to make it easy, bring a calculator, okay? So it says calculate the DNA similarities, okay? DNA similarities between the chimpanzee and the human. So we're looking at the genomes. I know they've put it there. I know I didn't read it. The genomes, right? Now, the genomes are the inside, your genes itself, okay? The genes in cell, what is the difference between, it says, how much different are they? Or, or what is the similarities? Where, what do we have in common? Now, if you remember this diagram, Remember I said, said to you, you've got this 13%, you've got the 7.9%, you've got the 5.7%, you've got the 3.6, the 1.6, and the 1.4, okay? Those are the differences between it, okay? What are the similarities? So, if I have a look at it, similarities, okay? What I'm going to do, I'm just going to add a bit more space there. Remember, what is the percentage between the two? If I have a look at it, there it is, it's 1.4. Go back down here, 1.4 is the difference between them. But remember, what did they say? What is the similarity? So we don't want the difference, we want the similarity. Okay, so how do you get 100% the same? I've just said it, 100%. So if I have 100%, if you're perfect, and they say there's a difference between 1.4, so the difference is 1.4, you take 100, you'd, oh, this pen today for me is not working nicely, but let's go back, you get this 100%, uh, right? You minus 1.4 and you will get to, just think about it, 100 minus 1.4, can you give me the answer? Very simple, okay? It is 98.6. 98.6. Try it in your calculator. It's very easy. It's not a difficult sum. It is definitely 98.6. Very easy. So the similarities between them is 98.6. Two marks for a simple, simple sum. Even if you do maths lit, I promise you, relax, take a deep breath. You can do this with ease. It's the best and the easiest way to get marks. These are very, very easy sums. You can do this and we all know it. Right, so let's carry on. Question two, okay? Question two is very simple. The diagram A, B, C, and D. So now we are ready. What are we going to do? We are going to look at three different diagrams and we are going to actually compare them. You know, three diagrams, people love comparing things, right? So in your test, they're going to have comparing. Okay, three diagrams, they say they're comparing. And if you have a look at it very closely, if you carry on reading the question, they're going to bring in Homo sapiens, right? Homo erectus, and lastly, big words, you have to worry about chimpanzees. Okay, there's a three. So, of course, we're going to have how many skulls? Three skulls. Look how nice those look. Okay, but now I want you to remember something. Life science, they try and confuse you. It's not difficult. Life science is actually very, very easy. What they do is they make the question sound difficult. The answers you know. You've studied, you know the answers. So all I want you to do is make sure you know your facts, make sure you take a deep breath and get it right. So let's have a look at this. If you can remember, look at the order, the order that they actually go and put these skulls in. So the first thing they mentioned was Homo sapien. Okay, so the first one was Homo sapien. I'm just going to put HS. Okay, the second one they put you was Homo erectus. And the third one they give you is your chimpanzee, right? Your third one is your chimpanzee. Can you remember all three? So now watch this. If I had, if I had to take the order that they're putting it in, they would say that diag uh, diagram A would be one, diagram B would be two, and diagram three would be C. If I move that down a bit, you'll see. Diagram three would, would be C. 
Now, that is completely wrong. Do not let them fool you. Okay? You know, know the shapes of your skeletons, of your craniums, of your head. Know them very well. So if I look at this, I know for a fact that B is definitely going to be Homo sapiens. So that is diagram one. That's Homo sapiens. There's Homo sapiens. If I have a look at this one, that is a chimp's head. So that's CH. It's a chimp. And then you get to the top one, which is your Homo erectus. Your Homo erectus. So you see how they've already confused you. I know when I went over this, I made sure that I read the question carefully because one of my boys didn't. And he got so confused, he was a bit worried at the end, and I had to explain it. So I'm making sure that you remember this. Concentrate while reading your questions. Right, now, if we have a look at it, the first one, from the diagram, A, B, and C. It says, name the species and the appearance on, oh, and, and the time on earth that they came, right? They want to know which one came first, which one came second, which one came third. Okay, this is where the problem comes in. Okay, I want you to remember this very carefully. There's two ways we can do this. Okay, this is a, a gift for you guys. Okay, firstly, if I had to look at it, if you remember that painting or that, uh, uh, the painting of where we went from the chimpanzee on all fours all the way up to man standing, right? Then you would say the chimpanzee would come first, okay? The Homo erectus would come second, right? And the Homo sapien would come third, okay? So just remember this. You would say one, one, two, three. If you say one, two, three, you are absolutely 100% Right. Okay, so your answer could be, it's very simple, if I have a look, it will be in order, would be C, A, B. So let's write there. Okay, first would be C, second would be A, and third would be B. That's perfect, 100% right. Okay, that is the answer that they normally give first. So you're right, you've been thinking. But there's a slight problem, and I'm going to explain it to you now. Okay, I'm going to go back to the first slide, and I want you to have a look at this. Remember this whole uh, diagram, okay? Remember over here I said to you that the chimps and humans split, okay? If I said to you the chimps came before the humans, okay, I'm right. Humans, at this part here somewhere, you would get your Homo erectus. The chimps only started developing round about this area here. So you can actually, if you have a look at that, and you use a different way of looking at it, you could actually say, if I bring this down, you could actually say that this is a species on its own at the moment, right? These ones have died out, do you understand? And then these guys are still alive. So all in all, they still alive, and they still alive. So that must mean this one must be first, this one must be second, and that one must be third. So they will mark it right if you said the first one was uh, C, wait, the first one was B, no, A, sorry, I didn't look at the picture. The first, first one is A, the second one would be C, and the third one would be B. B will never change. It's just the two between the pictures, right? The two pictures itself, there and there. Now, the reason why we chose our first answer is because of the way they walk or the way we've been taught human evolution happened, okay? So you can put both. Don't worry about it. Make sure that you have a good reason and you understand how it works, okay? I tested this out. I definitely said the first one. But one of my colleagues that I teach with chose the second one. So I made sure we had an understanding and I could, I could explain it to you so you can understand where we're coming from. Okay, so hopefully that has helped you quite nicely. Okay, this next question that we have, okay, question two is part of it. I put the skulls there again. Okay, it says there, tabulate three visible. That's the big thing, visible. They don't care what you think. They worried about what you can see, right? They must have the picture in front of them and what you can see. So let's have a look at it. Visible structure. If I have a look at it, there's a structure. It's what you can see physically. Difference between diagrams B and diagrams, where's the other one? A, there we go. 
Diagram A and diagram B. So let's go back up there. A and B, there they are. Don't have to look at number C. It's out of the question. Structural differences, okay? So what do they look like differently? Secondly, this big word here, tabulate. The minute you see tabulate, you need to give it one of these. This is very important. Okay, diagram A, diagram B. You have to do that. If you do not tabulate, you are not going to get the marks. They can pull a complete line right through it because you didn't listen to the instructions. You got If they say to you, draw a graph on the same set of axes, you need to put the graph on the same set of axes. If you put it on two different graphs, you get naught. If you, have a, if you do not tabulate, you get naught. Okay, now, if I have a look at it, they said, yeah, three differences. So, we can already go one, two, three, and we can have differences. So, let's see it. Between the two, just by looking at it. I know for a fact, look how big, look how big this piece is, right? And look at this size. Okay, that looks nice and, this, this one here looks nice and round. But look at the size difference here. Look at the difference in sizes. Okay, that means, first of all, that diagram, is it A, B, and C, there we go. Diagram A has got a small brain. Okay, diagram B will have a large brain. You all with me so far? The bigger the head, the more brains you can put in there. Do you all understand that? It's a very important thing. Next thing, I can see here, look at this part, okay? This piece here, look how flat the skull is, okay? There it is, look how flat, there it is. What does this have here? What has this got here? Okay, it protrudes, it moves forward, so it's visible. If you have a look at us, I mean, I might say like this, I have a flat face, right? My chin doesn't stick out. Oh, I mean, my, my mandibles, my top piece doesn't stick out, right? Whereas of a chimp, you have a look, they've got that nice big round thing over there, right? It sticks out, okay? So it is, you've got to make sure, another one would be that your, um, how do I say it? You have a protruding mouth, protruding, uh, if I go back to that, to me today, I'm so in the mood to get you guys learning that I'm just trying to, I mustn't rush, I must just get it going, okay? It's got a protruding mouth, right? And we do not. So no protruding mouth. No protruding mouth, right? We don't stick out, okay? Now, what I'm doing is I'm gonna give a couple more than three. Okay, have a look at this. See this piece here? If you have a nice look at that. Look how it actually comes out of the head. It comes out, it actually stands out. Look at the humans here. It doesn't. Do you feel your eyebrows here? Protruding eyebrows. You can't feel them. They're flat with, your, with the top of your head. They're completely flat, right? Whereas with this thing, it's not. Okay? So this one has got protruding. Uh, see, there I go again. Right? You've got your protruding um, eye sockets, protruding eye sockets. And we have no protruding eye sockets. Protruding eye sockets. Now, that there is all they asked for. Okay, that's all they asked for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the writing there and I want you to listen to me. I'm going to carry on here so we can actually see this picture. Okay, so if you have a look at it, it's very, very simple. Okay, look at size. Look at the size of the jaw over here. Can you see the size of the jaw? And look at the size of the jaw over here. Okay, they've got a big jaw, or this part of their jaw is very big. We have a very small one. Not very small, but we have a smaller one. So they've got a large jaw, we have a smaller jaw. Okay, there's another difference. Okay, if you have a look at it, what else can I see here? I'm trying to make sure that you've got everything. Um, their nose, actually, this piece here, look at this nose piece, it's actually hidden back. Ours protrudes. So our nose piece protrudes, their nose piece goes in. So if you look at a chimpanzee, it looks like their nose and their mouth is come, oh, their, their nose and their things are all flat. We come and stick out, right? 
That's another difference. And you can see it on here. Look at this indentation. Oh, let me get rid of that. Look at this indentation over here. There's a huge, huge, huge indentation. Where here, very small one. Very, very small. Now that there is very important, right? That's how evolution worked, right? This tells me, this big jaw here, this big nose area, tells me that they've actually vegetative people, right? They used to eat a lot of vegetation. The more vegetation they ate, the better. For us, we don't eat as much ve vegetation. Okay, so I've given you a couple of differences between the two pictures. Okay, very important. You need to go down and you must be able to list them. The only one three, pick the obvious three. Okay, but make sure you put it where you can see it on the picture. Okay, there's pointless me saying, oh, there's big teeth in gap, oh, there's big gaps in the teeth. Okay, it's pointless me saying their jaw is, uh, the human jaw is round where the, um, the, Diagram A, the jaw is small, more rectangular shape. It doesn't help me, okay? I cannot prove it. I need to see it on this diagram. So make sure you have a good look at that. Right, now, if I have a look at that before, I've gone on to the next question, but before we go on to the next question, what I actually wanna do is I want you to go for a break. Just think about what everything's happening, right? What we've gone over, and of course, remember, this is evolution, so they do a lot with chimpanzees and with everything. I want you, to go get something to drink, go to the toilet, have a bit of a break. We'll be back in a few seconds and we'll carry on. Good. I'm glad, glad to see you back. Hope you've got your, your water and you've refreshed and you were thinking about the stuff and um, you're ready to take on the last bit. The nice part about this, okay, what I've done now, the first part of the show is I was actually giving you the main things. Now, I want you to see the differences as we're going along, right? So let's start. This question, of course, again, it's got chimpanzees and humans, always, for some reason. Okay, it says the diagram below shows the skulls and pelvic, skulls and the pelvis of different animals. Now, let's have a look at that. And of course, of three different mammals, answer the questions that follow. It's always answer the questions that follow. So, let's carry on. There they are, have a look at it. We've got the human, we've got Othrolopithecus, and of course, we've got the chimpanzee. It's very, very simple. Right? And of course you've got the skull on the side and that and the the um the pelvis on the other side. Okay, now there, look at this big word. Tabulate. Always, always tabulate. They like the difference. Okay? The four observable difference. Remember what you see. Don't make things up. It's very easy. It's right in front of you. Right? Then of course of the pelvis and everything, uh, the pelvis between the human and the chimpanzee. Do not use Arthrolopithecus. We don't need it right now. Okay, so let's have a look at it. The human and the chimpanzee. We did it two seconds ago, but we first need to look at the, the head. But look at this. That's a big thing. The, for, uh, the foramen uh, um, magnum, which is big word, of course, that is the hole where your spine goes in. So there's the fir first difference. Can you see them? Okay, don't forget what I need, need you to do if you are writing down. Start off with a table don't forget okay do not forget that table's very very important you've got to have a table otherwise you get into big trouble okay so i want you to write as i'm busy explaining it okay first one you have a look the part the whole the hole where the spine goes into very important if you look at the chimpanzees it's right at the back if you look at the humans it's right in the middle okay there's a reason for that when you're gonna find out the reason in a few few seconds, right? Next thing, have a look at this size. Look at this, look how big this is. Oh, look how big this is and look how big this is, okay? Remember, big cranium means large brain, small cranium, small brain. So there we go, the cranium is big of the, ch of, of the, the, the human, right? The cranium is small of the chimpanzee. Perfect, there we go. What happened, what did we find inside the cranium? course your brains are things that we're using at the moment so human big brain the chimpanzee small brain okay so I'm giving you all the difference remember they only wanted four okay there's a lot have a look at it look at the teeth here can you see the teeth look at what shape it's in look at the teeth shape over here can you see that it's actually almost like a rectangle. Okay, so the chimpanzee's got a rectangle-shaped mouth. 
The human has got a round shaped mouth. Okay, there's another difference. It's very important. Have a look here. I know I've written over it, so I'm, I'm going to erase it. Something that I never do, but I'm going to erase this piece for two seconds. I'll put it back in a few seconds for you guys. Okay, now look at this piece here. I know I'm bending down, but this piece here, can you see them? Okay, that is these bones over here, right? They're your, they're your cheekbones. Your cheekbones, those cheekbones are on the chimpanzee stick out. With us, they're not as big. So the cheekbones of the chimpanzee are nice and big and strong. Ours is not. Okay, so the chimpanzee's cheekbones are stuck out and the humans, look how small they are, they're not. Okay, let me just put that piece that I raised in earlier so that you can remember exactly what I'm talking about, right? There's another difference. That was just the skull, okay? Have a look at the pelvis. If I have a look at the humans, there it is. Look how big the pelvis is. It's like a bowl shape. It's holding up everything, right? It's holding up this whole top part of our body. That's what that bowl's for. If I have a look at the, uh, the bottom one, it is long and thin. It's for bending over, right? So if we have a look at it, the whole part, if you look at the sac sacrum over here, it's long and thin. There's a difference. This one is short and thick, okay? Short and thick is a human's. Tall and thin is the chimpanzees, right? It's in a bowl shape, the humans, the whole shape of it, it's in a bowl shape. The whole shape of the chimpanzees is long and thin. It's like, like a, like also like its mouth in a rec rectangle, right? Can you see it? It's very nice, it's big differences. Now remember, they walk on all four, we walk on all two, okay? Very, very important. So I've just given you a couple of differences between the two, okay? Let's have a look at the next question. If I can get to there, uh, there we go. The next one, remember, exact same question. I've just put the, the pictures there so we can see it. We don't have to turn back all the time, right? Let's see, which organisms are bipedal? Now, bipedal, what is bipedal? Think about it. Bi, sickle, bi, sickle means two. Remember, bicycle is two things. So by, and then of course, what do you push in a car? I'm trying to explain it. You push the pedals with your feet. So by, pedal means two feet, okay? They walk on two feet. They move on two feet. So by, pedal, there it is, by, pedal, very important word. It says there, which two organ, or which organism or organisms walk on two feet? Don't forget, you need to know what the whole things are, right? By, pedal, and if we have a look at it, if you want to carry a lot of weight, what do we need to do? We need a nice, big, round hip, okay? So let's have a look. Which has the two, or which has a round hip? Look how round that one is. Look how round that one is. Look how long and oval that is. Okay, so we'll have the Othrolopithecus. Let me just get back there. Othrolopithecus, and we'll have the human. So you could write there, Othrolopithecus, and you write the human. Two marks for nothing. They've just given it to you just by knowing what it looks like. Okay, you guys are good enough. You can do this. So relax. Everything's fine. Okay, next one. Another question. Remember, same picture. Everything's there. Okay, give one reason observed from the diagrams for your answer and above. Now, I've just explained it to you. Okay, remember that these things are nice and big to carry the weight. Right, so there it is, the bowl of the, or you could say that the pelvic girdle is nice and big to carry the weight. There we go, very nice. Okay, simple and easy. Very, very, very easy. You guys can do this. It's nice and simple. These are the best things ever. It's the best things ever. Okay, next question. As I said, we're carrying on. Okay, state one visible difference, one visible difference between the skull of the Othrolopithecus and the human. Okay, let's have a look at it. First of all, look at the magnum again, where the hole, where, every, where the bone goes in, right? Look at it, one's in the middle, one's in, a little bit more, more back, okay? Have a look, you can see another one, there is the cheekbone, there is the cheekbone, okay? Have a look at this, this is still a bit more rectangular shape, this is a bit round, okay? All it, they ask the same questions over and over again to try and confuse you. You can do this. It's very easy. Look at the pictures. You can do this. 
Don't be shy. Go crazy. Write on your page, page like I'm doing. Find the differences. Remember when you were young, you had that spot, spot the differences, and we could get it from there. Okay, now, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, yo, that's a lot of stuff to take in. So what I'm going to do is go have another break, right? Have another glass of water, go to the toilet. Come on, guys, we can do this. Give your brains a bit of a rest, and I'll see you in a few minutes. Welcome back, guys. Hopefully you relaxed and sorted and you've gotten your mind around everything and you're feeling better and you've got your water and you've got your pens and papers out again and we're ready to go. Okay. Hopefully you guys are understanding where I'm coming from. I'm trying to put it in the nicest and easiest way possible. Right, so <clears throat> question four. Guess what? We're going to have a good look at those pictures. Once again, chimpanzees, humans. They love them. That's one of the, the best things I always love. They always give chimpanzees. You'll notice these are all from different papers. So come on. Okay. Go over all the papers. You'll notice always chimpanzees come up. Okay. It says, study the pictures below um, on the part of the skeleton structure of primates, right? And answer the questions that follow. The reason why they say primates is because we're also one of them, right? We're also part of it. So let's have a look at these things. Look what they've done. Okay. They've given the human skeleton, they've given the chimpanzee skeleton, right? They've told us that they, can you remember that big word, that huge word, okay? That means we walk up on two feet. By is two, and pedal means on your feet. So we stand up, we walk on two feet. Hope you're remembering that. Two feet, which means if you had a motorbike, okay? You have a bicycle, which is two, Right? What happens if you have a motorbike with four wheels? What do you call it? I know a lot of the guys are going to get it. Hopefully, I know some of the girls that do this are going to definitely get it. But what do you call that thing? Okay, you call it a quad bike. Okay, so pedal means that we're walking. How many things is it walking on? It's walking on four. So what is it? Quadrupedal. There we go. Quadrupedal. That's a nice way. It works on all four. Okay, now. You've got to remember that this is coming. The reason why they give you this, they wouldn't just give it to you. There's a reason why they're giving you this thing. Okay, so don't get scared when you hear it. Okay, it says one reason why apes and humans, apes and humans are referred to as hominids. Hominids. Now, you tell me, what does a monkey have? A monkey has something that we don't have, okay? If you have a look at this, okay, they both have a brain right? They both have arms, they both have legs, they both have everything. So you tell me, or just think, what do we not have in these pictures? Okay, it's very simple. I'm going to draw it in and you tell me. Okay, yeah, look at this. There's the one, and there's the other. Can you think what it is? It is a tail, okay? We are hominids because we do not have a tail. No other reason. Hominids do not have tails. So please remember that. Very important, very nice. This is a, a type of question that they're going to throw in there to make you get confused and think, oh, it could be brains, it could be anything. Hominids are there because they do not have tails. Right. Okay. So next, next question. You're not going to forget that, that one, I hope. Right. Next question. Name the term used to describe the locomotion, the locomotion of... Humans and chimpanzees. Come on. Come on. We've just seen questions two seconds ago saying, why does it walk like that? And I've just explained to you what it looks like. Okay, so think about it. What is it? Let's go back up there. How does, what does he do? He walks on two feet. This one does it on <coughs> all fours. And if he's work, walking on all fours, it's quad. So let's go down and we get the... It's uh, by, okay, this one is, let me get some more space there, this one would be quad, okay, remember, it's bipedal or quadrupedal, very, very important, very nice, very easy, you can do this, right, bipedal and quad quadrupedal, that is how they move along, right, let's have a look, remember, when I do this, at least I get the question there so we can actually see what's going on, and you need these pictures all the time, suggest so two ways, Suggest two. Look how they put it in, in capital. Do Make sure you read the question carefully, right? Suggest two ways in which the locomotion, right, 
of modern humans, so us now today, humans, not chimpanzees, will be disadvantaged, disadvantaged, so not positive, disadvantaged if we had a skeleton structure of the ape or the chimpanzee. So if you have a look at this, now that we've seen this question in detail, right, let's just have a look at what would actually happen. Now, the human, remember, bipedal, stands up straight, and then, of course, your chimpanzee again, um, let me just get to the pen, the chimpanzee, of course, he walks on all four, which is your quad quadrupedal. Can you remember that very carefully? So if we had to have the structure of this chimpanzee, I want you to just have a look at it. We would have to have our just have a nice look at the board. We'd have to have our spinal cord coming out of here, right? And if our spinal cord's over there, we'd have our legs and that down there. And if that is the case, we are going to be looking at like this. Now, if it's like this, we are not going to be able to move. If you look at this, if I move like this, I can actually move my head right round, right? The minute I put this down here, I can't do squat. Look at that. It doesn't work. You cannot move your head, okay? So first of all, if I had a look at that, we could not move our head, so we cannot see properly. If you cannot see properly, you are defenseless. Remember, everything on, on we, we, we go through evolution for a reason, right? We need to see. Even though we think we're the big main men on there or main woman on there, we, need, we still have predators. The reason why we're main is because we can get away from predators. This, having your neck the right way, keeps you away from predators. So first of all, if, it, if we had the structure or your, your spinal cord coming out the back of your cranium instead of from the middle, you're not going to be able to get anywhere, right? It's going to be difficult to see your predators, okay? The next thing, if we have a look at it, if this is the case, have you ever, let me, have you ever tried to run, right, on all fours? Which goes faster? If you are bipedaled, bipedaled or if you quad quadrupedaled? If you are bipedaled, you can actually run that, I mean, look at Bolt. Okay, Hussein Bolt, runs 100 in whatever, under 10, right? If he's running under 10, can you run under 10 with your thing? We'd be much slower, okay? Just remember, our structures of our legs are not built like that. We will be a lot, a lot slower, okay? Next thing, our body. Well, well, let's, we'll, we'll, we'll have a look at all the different, what's name is now? This is just two differences. If I have a look at it, what would happen if we had the structure or the bone structure of the chimpanzee. Right, next thing we're gonna have a look at is question 4.4. Now, this is a nice big question. Distinguish, distinguish means show the difference, right? Distinguish between the skeleton structure of the human and the chimpanzee in, except, except, there's a big one, other, so except other, than those mentioned in 4.3. Now, what did it say here? Two ways for locomotion. So locomotion, if we messed around, what would be different between the chimpanzee and the human? Okay, they used locomotion, so anything except for locomotion. So, let's see, distinguish between, did it say for any second, tabulate? Did not say anything about tabulating. Okay, so we don't need to tabulate. We could say human, point form, dab, 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 dab. You can say uh, the a chimpanzee, this, 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 this. It's always good, right, to, to tabulate because if you tabulate, you actually, you're actually making it very easy for yourself. Okay, now let's have a look at it. What is the difference between the human and the chimpanzee? Okay, if I have a look at the human, right, his legs... These parts here are longer than his arms. Look at his arms over here. The arms are, our arms are a lot shorter than our legs. The chimpanzees on the other hand, look how long their arms are and look how short their legs are. Right, so there's the first difference. We have short arms, long legs, they have long arms, short, short legs. You put that down, okay? We walk straight up, they walk down, okay? That's another one. Bar pedal and quad quadrupedal. Remember, that's movement. So what you have to do is our position of our body. Ours is straight up. Humans walk straight up, right? And if you have a look at the chimpanzee, they are in a rectangle form.
they are in a rectangle form, which makes it easier for them to be on all fours. Right, let's see. What else can we see that's a difference? Okay, remember their hip structure? Have a look how they actually, their hips are actually lower down than what were ours are. Their hips are right down here. Their bo our bodies are nice and straight up. The hips play a very, very, very important role. Right? So we've got the hips, that's different, makes us carry straight up, makes them carry all the way down. Remember we mentioned earlier about phalanges, right? Their phalanges are completely different to ours, right? Theirs are nice and long, ours is a little bit shorter, okay? Next thing, ours can be straight, right? Our hands are nice and straight. If I had to take my one finger, it's nice and straight. If I had to take one of these animals, or the chimpanzees, it would be curved. Their fingers are nice and curved and long, so they can get round branches. We also have true opposable thumbs. Our opposable thumbs are completely and utterly opposite. They work opposite. They're opposing each other, right? Where chimpanzees have got a very, very long thumb. It's not 100% opposable, okay? They do have opposable thumbs, but not 100%. We are completely good. So we, they can move round trees, we can't. Okay, remember their, foot, their, their feet, their phalanges are also long. Ours is very short. Right, then, if we have a look at it, the next question, there it is. Question 4.5, right? Phalanges, very, very important. Your phalanges, remember I just spoke, spoke to you about the phalanges. Phalanges are theirs is very long. Ours is very short. Theirs is curved. Mine isn't. So let's have a look at this question. Predict, right, the shortcomings. Predict the shortcomings. So what are we not going to be able to do? Predict the shortcomings, right, or challenges. That's what shortcomings mean. The challenges, if apes could not have their structure things, if they had ours. Now, have you tried to climb a tree? Climbing a tree is nice and easy, but can you swing from branch to branch like they can? It's impossible. For some reason, we will never get it right. We can't. Reason is, our fingers aren't nice and long. They aren't bent. They're not strong enough. They're not built for that, right? We are built for picking things up. Their fingers are round. And look at them. Look how he walks on his fingers. If you try to walk on your fingers, it is not very nice. I can't do it. He-Man can't do it. Chimpanzees, they can do it, right? They are built for that. Very nice. Their fingers are curved, very, very strong. Right, so the shortcomings would be they wouldn't be able to swing in the trees. Very nice. Okay, now look at the next question that I have. It's actually the last one, right? This is a, a nice little one, okay? They've given you different skulls. They've taken the whole skull away. They've just made it different. Right, so what I've done here, they said study the two skulls on the next page. Now remember, I'm making this so that, so that you can see it. It's not on the next page. The same scale. Okay, oh, let me get a pen going, yeah? It's the same scale. In other words, in other words, the skulls are the exact same size. Now, I could take the skull of a human, but this skull is too big, I bring it closer. What I do is I shrink the skull normally so you can see both of them. Now, this one, they're saying, is on the exact same scale. They're very good. They're very close to each other. Right, so if I had take it down, look how actually big it is. Look at the size of these things. These are big things. This is your Homo sapiens, in other words, us, right? And this is your Australopithecus africanus. Yes, big words, you can do it. So relax, don't stress. Let's see. Explain the importance. Explain, okay? You need to explain. In other words, tell me about it. Let me understand what you are thinking, okay? So explain the difference of the discoveries of the skulls, so when they found these skulls, of the Australopithecus in understanding the evolution development of humans. So what they've actually said is, it's very simple. How does it change evolution to find these skulls? So in other words, they're actually asking us, what happened? Why is it so important for us to know these things? Okay, so if we have a look at it, Hominids, right? No, no tails. Where did we come from? I did not come from a chimpanzee and you did not come from a chimpanzee. So what they're actually saying is your hominids or your Australopithecus 
we come from there. We can see how we've changed from an ape, well, not from an ape, from an ape-like creature, right, from a common ancestor of the chimpanzee, how we changed to form what we are today, right? We notice that the chimpanzee was very close to this, but not the same. The chimpanzee does not have such a big skull. Remember that on one of the other questions. They do not have such a big skull. Right? And this skull is closer to our side skull. So that means we come from that. Even though that was a, like an ape. I, I keep doing this because it, you can't say it was an ape-like creature. It was a hominid. It was human. Well, not human, but it was there. It was very close to us. Right? So finding of them tells us how we evolved. It tells us that we, not, we didn't come from chimpanzees. We came from a similar ancestor as the chimpanzees, right? Which is very, very nice. It also tells us that we have changed. We've been like every other animal to see where we have come from. Okay, so the evolution development of humans is how they changed, where they came from, and how we have physically changed to get where we are today. Right, so you can actually, they can actually put this in an essay, by the way. They normally use things like this in essays, Right? The essay question last year was about out of Africa and the DNA um, in the mitochondria and how we can trace it back to our ancestors and to um, the, 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 the cradle of humankind. So they can ask you questions like this. So this is a very nice question because it just tells us where we come from. So hopefully I've helped you out. And... Um, if you've got any questions, please, your life science educator is always willing to help you. And the te textbooks are there. You can do this.